So, look what a guinea did to me yesterday. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That's that was good. hard to stay out of the No. That's like got me there, horse, got me on this finger in here where I had to take my ring off. All right. And got me here. We were catching them and putting them in with putting them in big turkey den. Well, we ended up having to take the big turkey out because he was trying to kill them. The other two turkeys wasn't messing with them, just the bigger one. So I said, okay. Amy crawled in there, grabbed him, handed him to me, and I held him up. I said, yeah, well, you ain't big enough yet. Because I was fixing to wring his neck. <laughs> no, you weren't. I was not going to butcher him. Not with an extra cat pen sitting there. No, he not big um, enough yet. He needs to be uh, fattened up some more. But, Are you ready? Yeah, I think I'm ready. Well, I got to find me a chair. I'll sell you one cheap. Okay. I'll just buy Well, this. I don't care. I mean, you got enough. I'll still have something to sit down on when I right. visit. <laughs> they might call to cook the spoon. It's right there. It looked like. <laughs> you know, you're a little possessive. That's Tyler, Sharon's you coffee. Come sit with that, so you're gonna play you can drink the coffee, but Dad, don't I'm, don't I'm just looking the for the coffee. I looked at it and I swore it was full of just white stuff. Okay, <laughs> your ears open, okay? So, you had asked me about communion, okay, and so, that's what we're going to do. Ron is all ears. Sandra's ready. They're all ready. Yep. So, and there's also, a scripture verse talks about when you come together, Did you how you, on? huh? Did you it's, on? it's on. When we all have, go right over there, honey. Here. Come sit in mommy and daddy's lap. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. No, we'll, we'll make him comfortable, too. All right. Come here, Tyler. Right here. You sit by rabbit. All right. You sit by rabbit. That when you come together, that you will have hymns, so, you know, and songs. And there's a little bit of an order to it. So a lot of churches start out with a lot of worship songs first. But when I was doing this, I noticed something when I was searching for my, my scripture verses for communion that actually they sung after the communion. So I thought that's kind of interesting. But I'm going to do a lot of reading first <coughs> and then I'll, I'll talk in between, okay? Um, we're going to start out with the where in Matthew's is the first mention of the Lord's Supper, okay? And that is Matthew 26, verse 27 through 30. And it states here, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my covenant, or the new covenant. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm, I'm jumping ahead. I'm reading too fast. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is a shed for the many for the remission of sins. Switch on over here. Come on, beloved. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from, the, from now or until the day when I drink it new with you in the, my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount Olives. It's kind of interesting. See, they sang after the event. Now, something here that it says for the many, for the remission of the sins. So, the, you know, you think about remission. That means, how can I put it? Remission is like it's given away. It's no longer yours. So, when you're doing communion, there's a forgiveness process taking place. And, he, and he's giving you his love, his mercy, his grace in exchange for your sins. 
So, now, you think about the new covenant. Now, in Exodus is when God is just, in Exodus 24, verse 6 through 8. It says here, And Moses took half the blood and put it in a basin, and half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has said we will do, and be obedient. Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord has made with you according to all these words. Now, there's a difference. The covenant in the Old Testament, the blood went on you. The new covenant, the blood goes in you. So there's something more happening here. There is a transformation. This covenant is causing a transformation so that we can uphold. It says, in hearing of the people, took the book. So that way there's a constant constant transformation and it wasn't just caused by reading it it was also by hearing God comes in through your body through your eyes ears nose mouth the eyes especially so that's why he took bread because you're going to eat of the Word of God. He's going to be your meal. He's going to sustain you in everything you go through. The Lord's Supper is about providing what you essentially really need. And that's food, drink, and Him. So, then we're going to switch on over here. Now, what happened here a lot of people started doing, because it also says, as often as you come together to do this in remembrance of me. The problem is, a lot of people, when Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he was basically reprimanding them. Because when they were coming together, they were not coming together the way the Lord established it. They weren't doing it to remember what he went through. They weren't remembering the covenant. They were doing it like a party. And so they, uh, so they actually missed out on all the blessings that came about. So, when you're, and now this is going to be kind of a lengthy reading here, because it's going to be from verse 17 through 34. And I'll try not to jump ahead of myself, because I'm bad for knowing this and, and jumping to the good stuff. So, it says, now in giving you these instructions, I do, I do not praise you, since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. The first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part I believe it. For there must not, there must also be fraction among you, that those who are approved may be recognized among you. So, believe it or not, there was a, when there was a lot of disorder in the church, it actually brought about showing those who actually was truly walking and out for Jesus. It says, it goes, Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim 
the Lord's death till he comes. So each time we do communion, we are stating that he died for us. We're actually truly saying, we're recognizing what he did. And when they were coming together before, it was because they were just coming to get a piece of bread. They're coming to get some wine. They were not really doing it to, for the Lord. They didn't recognize it. They treated it like it's just something symbolic. They didn't treat it for what transformation it can take place. Now, my Catholic heritage, my background in Catholic, taught me to love the communion. Because I truly believe there's trans somehow or another, I don't know how God does it, but somehow that actually becomes his body, and that actually becomes his blood. I don't know how he does it, but in my mind and in my body, that's how my body treats it. I, I, don't, treat, I don't treat it lightly. Says, and that's because of, it was the, uh, one of the biggest issues with the Catholic Church is always doing the Lord's Supper in a, in a fashion where it would be received as if you were receiving Christ in you. It says, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthily manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Now think about it. When you treat it lightly, and you just treat it like it's just a piece of bread and just a sip of wine, you're not treating it for what it really represents. You're not honoring what God's just telling you. So it says, I'm worthily. And a lot of people have a worthy issue. Like, I'm not worthy of God's law. I'm not worthy to be forgiven. I have done so many horrible things in my life. I'm just, I don't deserve to be forgiven. That's not what God is saying. That's not the kind of unworthy he's talking about. Because he made, through what he has done, us worthy to receive all that he has to offer. So, and it goes on and says, For this reason many are weak, sick among you, and many sleep. That's kind of amazing how communion, if it's treated lightly, can, can lead to... It says here, many are weak, sick among you, and sleep. Well, sleep was a reference to being dead back in those days. Because they didn't get the healing. They didn't respect it for what it was. For what God gave us a, a tangible way to touch an intangible God almost. God a lot of times feels intangible to people. So he gave you something that you can do and feel that you're physically taking part of him and he's taking part of you. And they didn't treat it that way. So they didn't get their healing. This is, but this is a meal that heals. You know? So, he goes, and if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. So, if we look at ourselves and say, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry, Lord. That's one sin, that's one judgment we won't have to take when we step into heaven. Because we already saw that it would not have pleased God and asked his forgiveness. To give you an example, okay? Now, yesterday I showed Jamie where I got in bit, just like I did y'all. All right? Now, you were not offended, and you were not offended, because I showed her just abortion. Jamie came to me and said, Sharon, in the future, please don't show that part of your body to my husband. I meant no offense. Okay, but I apologize for causing an offense. There was no offense intended. So, but I, I, I discerned what she was saying. I asked for forgiveness because I would not want to lead her away from my action, from her judging my walk with God. And so, that's another way we can judge ourselves. Is, is our walk 
going to cause somebody to walk away from God. Sometimes my mouth is not the best, unfortunately. So God's dealing with me on that one. Because there's still, we live in a world that we can't quite step out of yet. So unfortunately, garbage in, garbage out. And he knows that. So we don't have to be so condemning to ourselves. Just acknowledge it, ask forgiveness, and go on. That way, there is not that judgment. It says, Therefore, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. For if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home. At least you come together for judgment. And the, re and the rest I will set in order when I come. So, if somebody's really hungry, I done took care of your hunger. I made sure I had food, something to give you, because I knew you would be rushing and trying to get here, and that you may have skipped breakfast. So, I went ahead and fed you guys. So that when you took this, it wouldn't be done on an empty stomach. It would be done to where you could truly think about what he has done. Now let's do it in remembrance of him. And what are we remembering? This whole thing was established so we would remind ourselves what he endured and why we're waiting for his return. So, let's see. Where my little note card go? It's stuck in here deep. So that leads me over to Isaiah 53, verse 3 and 9. So, it says, He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. We didn't consider him. We didn't. Nothing. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was on him, and by his stripes we are healed. Are we? Like sheep that have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the equity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearer is silent. He opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who will declare his generation? He was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken, and they were made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had none, done no violence, nor was any deceit in him. If you read on further, you'll find, it says, his visage, how he looked, was marred beyond recognition. When you think about it. You see, I think Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion, displayed displayed it best. Every time he was struck, hit, his the, the cat of nine tails had shards of pottery in it, broken pottery, and it was designed to rip and tear. So you can imagine, as he was being struck, his flesh was being ripped off his body. And they and they struck him in the face. They struck him everywhere. So he was to the by the time they got done with him. If you think about every sin, everything was placed on him for of, of all of mankind. So you can imagine the brutality of it. To place that many sins on that on, on Christ meant there was not. Probably not an ounce on his body that was not ripped or tore. 
they still give you an image on the cross.